We have been watching Attorney General Merrick Garland testifying on Capitol Hill this afternoon. We heard him insist repeatedly that Special Counsel Weiss had ultimate and final authority. He was questioned as to why the special counsel only got that status five years into an investigation. He said he would not comment on an ongoing investigation. Uh, Leslie Wolf, the individual, the prosecutor accused of, quote, limiting the Biden questioning, according to Gary Shapley, he would not comment on her employment status, among others. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host Harris Faulkner and Emily Campagno. Also joining us, former State Department spokesperson and founder of Polaris National Security, Morgan Ortegas, and anchor of Varney & Co. on Fox Business, Stuart Varney. Perhaps one of the most stunning moments of the Attorney General's testimony came two and a half hours in. There was a lot of questioning on Hunter Biden, but then all of a sudden the question turned to the American people, to Catholics being targeted in churches, uh, to pro-lifers who have been targeted, to school board members, parents going to these meetings being targeted. And it took the Attorney General of the United States more than a minute to say that Catholics are not extremists. Take a listen. The po political weaponization of the DOJ is on you. Attorney General, I need a simple yes or no to the following. Just yes or no, because we don't have much time. Do you agree that traditional Catholics are violent extremists? Do you agree that traditional Catholics are violent extremists? Okay. Answer I have no question. idea what your what the traditional uh, means here. The Catholics, idea, let Catholics me just, that go I to church. Your, may I answer your question? Yes the or idea no. that someone with my family background would discriminate against any religion is so outrageous, Mr. so absurd. Mr. Attorney it's General, it was your FBI question. that did this. It was your FBI that was sending, and we have the memos, we have the emails, we're sending undercover agents into Catholic churches. Both I and the director this of the is, FBI the, have said the that we were appalled have said that we were appalled by that memo. So then you agree the that they're not extremists? We were appalled by that memo. Are they extremists or not, Attorney General? I think that... Are they extremists or not, Attorney everything General? Everything in that memo is Are appalling. Are they extremists or not? I'm asking a simple question. Say no if you think that was wrong. Catholics are not extremists. No. <laughs> Emily, he's the Attorney General of the United States. Religion is a protected class under American law. And clearly he was relying on the FBI director, Christopher Ray's comments when he said, I personally was appalled when he was testifying by the memos, but the whole point was the memos led to action. So under his watch, this attorney general's watch, those memos were written, drafted, circulated, approved, and then actions were taken with our tax dollars to that effect. The fact that he didn't categorically deny it from the instant one, rather than making us all sit through that sort of protestations for a minute and a half is so surprising. Why can't you come out and defend the American people and defend religious belief practicing Catholics and say absolutely not, not under my watch and never again? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's worth mentioning that the memo came from the FBI, so that's Christopher Wray. Christopher Wray has said he's appalled by the memo, so too has the Attorney General. But a tighter statement there, I think, is merited. Uh, they just went to break Harris, and mm -hmm. one notable contrast during <clears throat> Faulkner Focus was when you flipped, there was a crisis going on at the border. Oh, yeah. There was a brief panel of questioning about immigration, but the vast majority of this about Hunter Biden, an important topic, the investigation mm -hmm. there, Immigration and the lack of enforcement of American law is well, something. Well, and look, when Merrick Gar Gar Garland rather was pitched a question about that, he said, well, my answer would be too long. And then they took the break. Because, <laughs> I mean, at that point, there was video that was playing opposite. I don't know if anybody in there isn't allowed to have their phone, but we've had more than 4,000 people cross into Eagle Pass, Texas today. Mm -hmm. That's a town of people in itself. And among them, mostly males coming into the country, but many children, many women at this point. We had a drone up. You could see them coming um, via the water. They're on land. They're everywhere. They are coming in. The border is open. And it was just, I don't know, maybe a bit of irony, bad timing for Merrick Garland not to want to talk about the border, I think, because his answer might be too long, so he said. But we didn't, I, I don't know that he could have approached explaining what was going on anyway. And to try to vet that many people, he's part of the chain of command that has to make sure that we're safe in this country. There's a backlog. We need more judges down at the border. We need, we need, we need everything down there. We need all hands on deck. There are nations of people coming. We, we've yeah. seen people from Senegal in the last 96 hours. 
uh, East Africa. We hadn't seen that before in this stream of people. And previous to that, a few days ago, Arizona had record numbers of people coming over. That was primarily through the tunnels drug movement. But now it's more people. That's right. And important topics also for those two and a half hours. We got a moment from Adam Schiff that I want to play. This is him talking about indictments and whether these are Joe Biden indictments, um, as were alleged by the former president. Take a listen. Uh, on Sunday, the former president appeared uh, on a national news Sunday program and was asked about four indictments uh, and 91 counts facing him. He said to the attorney general, he said to the attorney general, indict him. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, I want to give you a chance to respond. Was the president telling the truth or was he lying when he said that President Biden told you to indict him? No, no one has told me uh, to indict. And in this case, the decision to indict was made by the special counsel. So that statement the president made on Sunday was false. The attorney general uh, was clear, Morgan, and he said, you know, that was the decision of Jack Smith, the special counsel. He said that repeatedly. But something I'm surprised Republicans did not bring up was a New York Times article that came out in March from Katie Rogers. I want to read this excerpt because the president, President Biden, does have opinions on the Trump indictments. This is according to The New York Times. He does have opinions. In the past, Mr. Biden privately told his close circle of advisors that Mr. Trump posed a threat to democracy, should be prosecuted for his role in the events of January 6th, according to two people familiar with his comments. Listen to this part. He also told confidants that he wanted Attorney General Merrick B. Garland to stop acting like a ponderous judge and to take decisive action. The president criticizing his attorney general, as alleged in the pages of the New York Times, should be something that's put on the record. Um, attorney general, did yeah. you read that? Did you see the president's criticism of you? It's funny. I didn't know you were going to bring up that article, and that's exactly what I was thinking about. This is how they make it known that they are happy or that they are unhappy. So we have the New York Times piece where clearly the president and his team were signaling to Garland through their favorite newspaper, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that they wanted him to take action. We also saw uh, in other publications this week uh, that Biden has signaled that he is unhappy the fact that uh, Garland has appointed a special counsel uh, to go after Hunter Biden. Now we have uh, the latest a gun charge. So, you know, this is coming from a group of people who remember uh, the first day, I believe it was day one of President Trump's administration in 2017, said now we begin the impeachment, even though they didn't have control of the House. Um, so, listen, it, it, it's clear with 91 counts uh, that there is uh, an agenda uh, to keep President Trump off the ballot, whether it's through these indictments and, and, and through trials or whether it's through, like, in the case of Colorado or California, trying to actually uh, uh, literally keep him off the ballot. And that's um, that's what we're going to see fighting for over the next year until the election. Well, this recess is only a few minutes. We'll be taking you back to the hearing in just a moment. But, Stuart, you have a big night in a week with Dana Perino. I cannot wait to watch this, the second GOP debate airing on Fox Business. Um, and you made a comment, you know, they, they were going to talk <clears throat> antitrust, the economy a little bit there. And you said they only had one minute to talk about it with the attorney general. These issues are worth exploring and you will explore them. Uh, we will indeed explore them. We will also explore in detail and depth immigration and mm. the border. Yeah. That's what you were talking about. Right before I sat on this set just, a, what, an hour ago, we were running video from El Paso, Texas, uh, Eagle Pass, Texas. Mm -hmm. 4,000 people, mostly single men, just rushing across the border. Before that, it was Monday with 2,000. On Sunday, it was 7,500. Right. You can bet that that is going to come up in the debate. That is a very important topic. Yeah. It's a shame that it didn't come up in these hearings today, because it could have. I, I wish we could have put you in charge of the questioning there. Five minutes for Stuart <laughs> Varney. We would have gotten a lot of good questions for, for these congressmen. I would have pursued the parental terrorism angle, and yeah. I would have pursued the extreme Catholicism angle. And that's what people want to hear about. We got a lot of weedy stuff about the, the special prosecutor. I wanted to hear what Merrick Garland and his FBI had done to the people of this country. We finally got there. And that was the fire in the hearings today. Yeah. I, I would have asked about soft on crime policies, too, as we've seen Absolutely. very, yes. very violent crimes against particularly law enforcement just That's in right. the last week or so. Yeah. I would want to know where uh, this top attorney for the land stands on toughening up. And if he's picked up the phone and talked to any of these DAs like Gascon who are dealing with, with cop shootings, cop killers, ambushes, that sort of thing. And I mean, not just on police officers, a wider public, but I'd want to know where he stands on all of that. Uh, the fentanyl was mentioned 
by one questioner and brushed off fairly quickly. Right. Hmm. That should it. have been in depth. I mean, how many, how many hundred thousand Americans have died from fentanyl yeah. coming across this border? In a beautiful one-year-old boy here oh. in New York City at a yeah. daycare. We don't know the circumstances of that yet, but it, it's a tragedy when we have children dying of the fentanyl epidemic. Emily, one point I just want to get on the record here is um, we had Mary Garland press. We don't have time to play the soundbite on the special counsel and why. Five years into an investigation, why all of a sudden did Weiss seek special counsel status? And you heard the attorney general say that that's an ongoing investigation. There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot to note. Why now, five years in? Well, I, the, the greater takeaway, in my opinion, is the fact that Americans' questions will not be answered because the standard answer now is there's an ongoing investigation. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of the million questions we legitimately have of why justice is not being served and why our tax dollars are being absolutely just pilfered all over the place, why the, the Biden family gets to enjoy a level of protection, none of that matters because it will always be answered by there's an ongoing investigation, so we will never learn the truth. I'm in a pessimistic mood today. I have to say there's a <laughs> nexus between what you were saying, Harris, and the Hunter um, situation. Situation because the whole point is, as we know, protocol out of the DOJ says you, you prosecute the felony, right? If there's a misdemeanor and a felony available, you prosecute the felony. These right. are in tax crimes and everything. So to your point, why aren't not only D the DAs pursuing the felonies and all of these wobblers in states, but why aren't we seeing it from the DOJ? A lot of That's questions. Question. And I know our congressmen and women will have more for the attorney general. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered, every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.